Welcome all to the lecture entitled Migration, How Life Pulsates Through and on Earth. I think a very topical subject. And we are going to approach that not so much from a social point of view, but from a theosophical perspective. We believe that knowledge of theosophical teachings can both put today's migration problems into perspective, as well as reveal deeper causes for them. And we hope that a better understanding in those underlying causes will also open the way to more sustainable solutions. Solutions that, moreover, are more in line with nature's movement toward greater harmony, spiritual development and unity. As you have come to expect from us, the lecture is structured in three parts, with a short break after each part and the opportunity to ask questions. We zoom in on the Earth in the first part, and in the next part we look at the function of us as humanity on Earth. And finally we look at how we can use this knowledge of migration in nature to look at how we can work with nature. Now last week we talked about what we mean by nature and what we base that on. And first we will briefly reiterate that, and then we'll start again with the three central tenets or proposition of Theosophia, or the ancient universal wisdom. Those three principles are boundlessness, cyclicity, and the fundamental identity of all life. Now, boundlessness is also described as something eternal and omnipresent. It is therefore always and everywhere, and is also the force behind all life manifesting. That is why it is also referred to as the one life, the stream of consciousness that springs from the boundless and expresses itself in many ways in all forms of life, visible and invisible. This expression proceeds cyclically, the second principle. Every life goes through alternating periods of activity and rest, of waking and sleeping, of life and what we call death. In essence, however, every being is an imperishable spark of eternity, also called a monad. An essentially immortal center of consciousness, so in that sense, every being is also essentially identical, the third premise. And further, this third premise also says that monads always express cyclically within the sphere of a higher or more highly developed monad and also that each monad cooperates with other, less highly developed monads to express itself. Now, how that works, we have further explained with the process of emanation. Emanation literally means flowing out. The atmosphere arising from a top or source consciousness creates a magnetic attraction to which lower level consciousnesses with the same characteristic are karmically attracted. Thus we are not incarnated on this planet, within this solar system, in a certain country, with certain people around us by chance, and we also interact life after life with our living building blocks that now embody themselves in our organs and cells. You can also recognize this process unfolding from inside to outside in everyday life. We mentioned the example of building a house, and there is a client, someone with a basic idea, who attracts more and more others who start working in all kinds of areas. An architect who in turn works with draftsmen and structural engineers, and then commissions a contractor. And that contractor in turn puts construction workers and other craftsmen to work, etc. But the client oversees everything and sometimes has to be involved in the choices down to the last detail. In the same way, every hierarchy of life, and in fact, the hierarchy of nature as a whole, is a multi-level collaboration. With that, these three fundamental propositions and this idea of emanation, we could define nature as follows from the Theosophia. As one, fast, living, inspirited organism. 
an organism composed of invisible and visible planes of existence, and furthermore, as something that is dual, with an active, conscious side that governs, and a passive, unconscious side that follows, both being relative. Just as, for example, the processes in our body, and for instance our breathing, circulation, digestive cycle, they all follow unconsciously and passively what, what we direct with our thinking and conscious actions. So there is also a relatively hierarchical relationship between invisible and visible planes of existence, from conscious and active to unconscious and passive, from spiritual to material, and that works from the inside to the outside. Now with all this we can now also look at our planet Earth and the migrations through and on Earth. First, based on the previous principles, we also speak of Earth as a living and composite being. Now you can explain that in two ways. First, the Earth as this outwardly perceptible sphere, which is a body belonging to a spiritual cosmic being working through that sphere. But secondly, also that body itself is a living being with its own monad. And we will especially look briefly at this last meaning. By the way, that the Earth is a living being is an already very old and widespread universal idea. Think for example of many religions and ancient cultures that assumed Mother Earth as a god or goddess. You can find it in ancient Indian and Chinese philosophy among the ancient Greeks and even today in many indigenous traditions. And this idea of the earth as a living being is increasingly coming to the fore even with recent climate change. Sometimes through simple observations, like this video of the annual cycle showing ice at the North Pole, deposits on land and water, uh, I'm sorry, showing ice at the North Pole deposits on land and water and retreating each winter. The movie consists of NASA photographs put together in sequence to produce this image of the breathing Earth. There are also many scientific indications of the Earth as a living ecosystem, which has led to the so-called Gaia hypothesis, among others. Indeed, one of the characteristics of a living organism is what they call self-regulation. An example is that the warming of the Earth's temperature causes algal blooms, while algal blooms in turn cause cloud formation, which in turn causes cooling of the Earth. Thus both, temperature, uh, thus both the Earth temperature remains in balance among other things due to algae growth. That the Earth can be seen as a living organism is increasingly accepted. For example, this is a picture from an app from the World Wildlife Fund um, about water. And it starts with the statement that water can be seen as the blood of the Earth, a directly theosophical teaching. And when you see this picture of the world with all its rivers, it does indeed look a lot like a network of veins and blood vessels. By the way, this educational app informs about the unnatural consequences of interfering with this water cycle. The orange points on the map are the places where dams have been built, which as we now know have a lot of impact on the surrounding nature of river areas. One of the ways in which we intervene in nature without the due knowledge. That it can be done differently is showing by this other project. It is actually a hole being deliberately made in the Afslide Dijk in the Netherlands, or literally called the Shut Off Dijk, a major dam in our country. And specifically with the purpose to enable fish migration. Through a channel, a freshwater current is created to lure fish. 
and large fish such as salmon and sea trout can swim in against the current, while small fish such as glass eel wait for the flood current and allow themselves to be carried along. The door is always open for the fish, unless water safety is at stake, then it is closed and for that, for that duration when a storm, uh, with a storm surge barrier. But there is even another project where fish themselves can open the door. It involves a special door bell for fish in one of the canals of Utrecht, a Dutch city, a unique project in the world. In other words, with knowledge of nature and for example the migrations of animals such as fish, we can also work on with nature in smart and fun ways. We are already seeing some simple examples of migration. But what is migration really? Migration simply means a change of place and is also described as a movement of population. Now this is a simple law of nature that if you put two chambers with a pressure difference in contact with each other, that the pressure distributes itself until there is an equilibrium or equal pressure in both chambers. You might say it's a form of seeking harmony on a physical level. In our atmosphere we see the same thing. When high pressure develops somewhere due to warming, air starts flowing into areas with low pressure and that causes all kinds of weather phenomena. Now we are talking about Earth migrations, but if we look at the Earth as a living being, there are just as many circulations and migrations through the Earth from an even broader perspective. Compare it to the circulations in our own bodies. Because if we look at how our body works, all kinds of circulations, currents or cycles play an important role in it. <coughs> Think of the respiratory cycle, the circulator, circulatory system or our nervous system. And these are not closed systems, we are in continuous interaction with our environment. And although the earth is sometimes seen as a closed system, we actually know that this is not the case. There is a continuous exchange with the environment at earth as well. We now take a step back to the earth, or rather to the solar system first, of which the earth is a part. Because our earth, in turn, is also an organ in the living solar system. And the sun, according to the Theosophia, is both the heart and the brain of this living being. In this clip we see how peri the sun periodically pumps or pulses its energies throughout the system. This is in fact a recording of a solar storm, a large burst of solar wind. And these solar storms occur particularly during the appearance of sunspots. And the sunspot cycle every 11 years or so actually constitutes the heartbeat of the sun. The following animation shows how the magnetic field around the earth conducts the energy from such a solar storm or pulse. It leads to the phenomena of northern light and southern light. The energy is channeled at the North Pole and partly goes through the Earth and comes out at the South Pole. And partly that energy spirals also around the Earth, in the North-South direction and from East to West. Now this visible flow or energy is only the outward observable phenomenon of an inner process. From the heart of the Sun there are also astral, mental, and spiritual currents passing through and over the earth. And those streams too consist of living beings. In fact, this also applies to our own spiritual core. According to Theosophia, we are at home throughout our solar system. Our spiritual part migrates through this solar system after death, and through the heart the Sun and also along the seven sacred planets as organs and after this long rest period returning to Earth to be born again.
but there are also outward migrations of this kind on Earth. Animals can sense the Earth's magnetic field and use it for their migrations. For example, thanks to Earth's magnetism, sharks swim in straight lines through the Atlantic Ocean, or birds use it to navigate through the air. And also every major stage in our development as humanity begins in the north and ends in the south. Like the energies from the sun, humanity follows a spiraling path across the earth from north to south and from east to west. But these are the major migrations seen over millions of years. In general we can conclude with the Greek philosopher Her Heraclitus that Everything flows, or pantarai. Does that also mean that staying physically in the same place is actually something unnatural? No, that would be a hasty conclusion. True, there is always flow in nature, but according to a movement from the inside out, from the spiritual to the material realm. And in the spiritual realm, migration is much more a matter of shifting states of consciousness than a journey in the physical realm. For example, more advanced consciousnesses can migrate to the sphere of the sun while being physically here on earth. In short, migration may be much more of an inner or a mental issue for us as humans, but we will further go into that in the last and third section. So let's now have a short three minute break and then we have some time for your questions. See you in a sec. What functions do the plants have? Okay, welcome back. Mariska, are there uh, questions? Yes, we have two questions. Yeah. And the first one is, what functions do the planets have in receiving the currents arising from the sun? Oh, that's, uh, that's really interesting. Um, well, I guess you can make the analogy uh, complete with our organs in our body. And we, all, of course, all know that our organs have specific functions. Um, uh, but there is this, well, there, there are these, these um, circulatory um, circulations going through. Yeah? For instance, our blood and then pumped by our heart and then going through our for instance, um, uh, lungs uh, to uh, get some oxygen and then uh, going to the next organ with specific functions, etc. And actually, those you could see that these circulations are circulations of, of beings. So, um, uh, like our blood cells are beings in themselves, so there are all, uh, we are all living beings, and actually Theosophy says we are not only uh, part of this earth, but really part of the solar system as a being, and also making our migrations through all these planets. Mm. So, um, um, yeah, you could actually, I guess also from the being point of view, say that each planet um, gives certain uh, possibilities for the being to develop certain parts of our consciousness. So, um, and like we now on Earth can develop a certain part of our consciousness that belongs to this, this sphere um, uh, on this Earth. But um, uh, maybe after long our peregrination on this Earth are complete and we go to another planet, let's say Venus for instance, mm -hmm. we will develop other um, um, yeah. Um, latent capabilities in, of consciousness. Mm. So um, that's that's more or less what you what you can say. And and these all these planets together uh, function um, uh, within the solar system. And like I already said, uh, Theosophy teaches that the sun is as well the heart as the brain of the solar system. And we see that after the peregrinations on the planets, we always, um, in between, also um, uh, go back and forth through the sun. So it's the, exactly the same with our heart. And so the blood comes back to the heart and is pumped through the body again, goes back to the heart, is pumped through the body again. And, and 
So um, it's very similar. And um, well, this is just a general answer I can I can give. Yeah. Well, it's a big picture. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the other question is: Can you make the comparison between a human and the solar system? Yes. And in a human, you can see the body and yeah. its energy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's energy around it. But how far does the the uh, the solar system stretch as a as a being? Yes. Well, it's interesting that we can um, uh, have we have some um, some uh, findings from recently from science. Um, that provides some insight which really uh, well fits with the theosophical teaching. So the theosophical teaching is that like uh, the planet, uh, like um, uh, is a living being, also our complete solar system is a, what they say, also a living cell. So um, actually, or a living atom maybe, maybe even better uh, called um, uh, within the living cell of the universe. But the solar system, they have um, two satellites, uh, Voyager, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which were sent by NASA um, uh, towards the, you could say, the barrier of the solar system. And they measured a certain um, um, yeah, big fall in, or you could say increase, better stated, um, in um, cosmic radiation after a certain point. Mm -hmm. So this Voyager traveled uh, all the way and then um, uh, yeah, a really long distance from the uh, center of the sun, <coughs> also uh, further away than the outer planets, much further away than the outer planets, um, they, they found this point where suddenly this, this increase happened. And Forger 1 did that, Forger 2 did that after a while at a different point. And so then the image appeared that there is this, and they have a special name for it, and I, I forgot, I, I told it in my Dutch lecture, but I, um, I forgot, but people can look it up, that there is this um, sort of, um, uh, they think it's um, either a croissant uh, shape or um, uh, a drop shape, around the sun, because the sun also travels through the mm -hmm. uh, Milky Way, um, 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 of this, you could say, solar body. So there is some sort of distinction there. And it's really interesting that, you know, that gives the image of this, this body that travels through the sphere of the universe. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank yeah. you. Well, those are the two questions. Okay, thank you. Then we'll continue the next part uh, about the function of humanity on Earth. We have shown in the previous part that